How's it going YouTube? We are out on a test drive. This is a 2013 Ford Flex 3.5 non-turbo. Uh, we did a time and chain job on this the other day because the water pump was leaking and it's time and chain driven and they are pretty common for leaking into the crankcase. Uh, since it is time and chain driven, we like to do the whole chain, tensioners, guides, all that stuff when we're replacing the pump. Um, my customer requested that we also replace the oil pump just preventatively. He found one that has like a higher uh, flow rate by melling. So we got him that, put that on as well. I don't, there were no check engine lights. Um, just coolant loss and he, he had been monitoring the amount of coolant loss and we confirmed that's where it was going even though that's what he was expecting because he's an enthusiast guy and then keeps up on this kind of stuff so what we like to do after big jobs especially is drive the car quite a bit and set what's called emissions monitors um, in scan tools or code readers they call those I slash M monitors and what these are are a set of programs that the engine computer wants to see um, different drive cycles uh, for various conditions loading all that stuff and what it's doing is looking for certain things to happen or not happen, and it will check things like misfires, oxygen sensor, readings and activity, um, catalyst monitors, evaporative emissions, things, and each one of these monitors, there are, there are like eight or so of them. Some cars, depending on the age, have some that others don't. Um, but there's roughly eight, and in our state at least, certain years of cars are allowed to have one of these monitors not ready, meaning that the program has not run, so, and even older cars are allowed to have two not ready. Um, but what, what this prevents you from doing is check engine light on, you can't just clear the code, and then drive to an inspection station, and get an inspection done it has to be driven um, some amount for some specific drive cycle that the manufacturer programs and that the car computer looks for so things like Toyota we can get these all the monitors to set within like 10 miles they're real fast um, hardest ones I've had are Chrysler's specifically Jeeps um, those like the long um, the thing that takes the longest is it requires some number, like one or two, complete cool-down cycles. So it's trying to uh, imagine that you're you're sitting the car overnight and it cools off completely, and then you drive it again. It brings it up to temperature. Um, but yeah, so the mo the manufacturers vary in what they want to see before they'll give the green light. And as you see in the thumbnail, you know th that's this car right here. Um, that's that's just my little cheap code reader and almost all of those red X's uh, are, are there on the screen and that just means that those monitors are not they didn't pass so they haven't run yet they haven't passed and what we like to see is all or as many of those as possible especially if it's related to the system we worked on um, we'd like to see those turn green so that we kind of have one final verification of repair and and a lot of times, you know, people are coming in for check engine lights. They they need to go get it inspected pretty soon after we fix it. Um, so sometimes, you know, these monitors won't set too quickly. And we have to say, yeah, you know, you don't have a scan tool. So just drive it for like 50 more miles and it should be set um, so that you can go get inspected. Uh, not always the case. Sometimes we can get it done. Sometimes we can't with the amount of time we have on here but for all intents and purposes, I can't go drive every car for 50 to 100 miles and let it sit overnight multiple nights um, to get, get these all done for them. 
So it's kind of kind of situation dependent. But right now I'm driving this um, up and down the road. It is raining. Just kind of in town here, trying to set a couple of these monitors. The car runs fine now. Um, I also want to do a big job, especially where the intake comes off, or you know something like this, where the we're doing a, a large engine work. Um, I like to look at at minimum fuel trim, and I'll show you that here, just so that we can tell if any vacuum leaks are, are present so that we know if there's any hoses or gaskets that are disconnected or, or not sealing well and that we can correct those before giving it back to the customer. So here again is some live data. I'm looking at short term and long term fuel trim on bank one. We're in neutral. Cars warmed up. Now I got the green light. So that's not really going to help us, but you could see there that it was, one of them was like negative 3% and the other was uh, positive 3%. And more or less, the short and long term fuel trims are summed, so they're added together. And ideally, you want to see 0%. That just means that the computer is not trying to compensate for something like a vacuum leak or you know any any other kind of thing that could could be problematic for the engine to run correctly um, so fuel trim means again that the computer is picking up some error and it is adding in a positive way or subtracting with a negative percentage some amount of fuel from uh, from the engine. So bank one is uh, like on a V6, you know, half the engine. Bank two is the other half. On a four-cylinder, you're only going to have bank one showing. But ideally, the sum of the two needs to be zero uh, percent. And if it's not, then you have a problem. If it's a high positive number, then you're going to have you could have, not going to, you're, you could have a vacuum leak. Now let me put it in neutral again. You want to do this warmed up with the car, not under load. Uh, so there we go. And it, it'll kind of even out here. Um, you know, plus or minus 5% is kind of generally considered uh, normal. If you see something like plus 20%, plus 25%, then we got an issue that we need to take care of. Most cars, I believe, plus or minus 25% is where we're going to have lean codes um, or rich codes come on. So those lean codes are what? P171, 174. Uh, rich codes, I don't know off the top of my head. Only because we do lean codes a whole lot more often. Um, I'll park it here. And we can get a good spot again back in neutral and it'll do a little bit of adjusting but you know together we have more or less zero one two percent there um, short term long term on bank two again sorry that's a little blurry but you get the idea around zero one percent something like that and that's again at idle, um, you know, in neutral and not under any sort of load or anything. Um, that's a short little video for you, kind of explaining the fuel trim and the emissions monitors and how we get another little bit of verification of repairs after we do something, especially like a big job like this. It's very important to do that because you don't want to send a customer off with a loose vacuum hose and then they come back the next day, checking the lights on, in their mind, you didn't fix something um, and, and you did mess up, you left something loose. So try to correct that beforehand before giving it back to them and just be as sure as you can be that you did the best repair possible. Last 
quick note on emissions monitors. If you can't get one or two or more to set, you can find information on the particular drive cycles um, to do that. We have them in our shop software. I found them on the internet before, so you want to Google something like um, EGR emissions monitor drive cycle, if that's the one you can't get done, or, or EVAP um, system emissions drive cycle for your, you know, make or model. And then that should get you sometimes a pretty complicated um, set of instructions on how to drive and what exactly to do to get that monitor to run. Have a good day.